Um, shall we begin with a word of silent prayer? Amen. Okay. So, last presentation, we were looking at Lot, going to the cities, we were looking at Aaron and the sons, so forth, where the Lord will give us the angels to, to aid us in all our trials and tests. Um, so, when we was also seeing that when we go out into the cities, the angels will keep us safe. And I know... In this movement, it has been used a number of times showing that when you, when you go out then, it is a false work. But error has, has no legs, legs of its own. And if the false are doing it, they're only getting it from, they're, they're, they're only doing it from something in which God has said, and now, but they're putting it in its wrong light and doing that at its wrong time. So we have to keep this in mind. Anything that Satan does, he's only taking something from God's word and, and, then, and then he sows his, his false principles, those false seeds um, in it to lead away um, men. <clears throat> so we'll look at this. This is a counterfeit. Satan always makes a counterfeit. We've been through this before, but let's refresh our memories on this, on this rule. So Evangelism 589, paragraph 1, says, Error draws his life from truth. Satan has wrought with deceiving power, bringing in a multiplicity of errors that obscure the truth. Error cannot stand alone and would soon become extinct if it, would, if it did not fasten itself like a parasite upon the tree of truth. Error draws his life from the truth of God. The traditions of men, like floating germs, attach themselves to the truth of God. And men regard them as a part of the truth. Through false doctrine, doctrines, Satan gains a foothold and captivates the minds of men, causing them to hold theories that have no foundation in truth. Men boldly teach for doctrines the commandments of men, and as traditions pass on from age to age, they acquire a power over human mind. But age does not make error truth, neither does its burdensome weight cause, cause the plan of truth to, to become a parasite. The tree of truth bears its own genuine fruit, showing its true origin in nature. The parasite of error also bears its own fruit, makes manifest that its character is diverse from the plant of heavenly origin. So, the true are to go out, go out into the cities and do a wonderful work. But the wicked go out into the cities and do a wonderful work as well. But one is wrought by God, and one is wrought by Satan, just as Janus and Jambres copied the work of, of God through Moses and Aaron. So these things we have to keep in mind, because Satan will try to deceive us on this point, too, if we do not see, see his devices. So now, <clears throat> now going to 1SM 202.1, which is why it speaks about um, Kellogg in his book called The Living Temple. We're going to read the bold. It says, The sentiments expressed do not give a true knowledge of God. All, all through, through the book are pas passages of scripture. These scriptures are brought in in such a way that error is made to appear as true. So Satan takes the truth and adds his false, falsehood upon it to make it seem as, as, uh, um, as truth. And Satan... Satan, Satan cannot come just as, as he is. He has to put himself in a garb. He comes as this angel of light. So this, is why he do, so this is why he does this. Finishing off the quote. 
says erroneous theories are presented in so pleasing a, a way that unless that unless care is taken, many will be misled. Jump down to the last sentence in the in the next paragraph, one of seven two two point two. Says the track of truth lies close beside the track of error, and both tracks may seem 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 to be say, excuse me yeah seem seem t -t -t to be one to minds which are not worked by the Holy Spirit, and which therefore are not quick to discern the difference between truth and error. So these track, so these two tracks, track of truth and the track of error, lie closely beside. But you ha you can only know which is true or false based upon the scriptures. So now we're gonna see when Satan had done this. One T two ninety three paragraph one. Just read the bold. Satan has has been ambitious to counterfeit the work of Christ and establish his own power and claims. Go down to the next bold, the sentence of the bold. Satan came, came to Christ in the wilderness in the form of a beautiful young man, more, more, more like a monarch than a fallen angel, with, with what in his mouth? Scripture in his mouth. So these men that, that, that will be marked will come with Scripture in their mouth, saying, saying, the Lord has said when he has not said. This is, this is Job's three friends and then Elihu. They come with these pleasing sophistries, looking nice and, and so forth. But um, we have to meet it just as, just as Christ met it. And she says, our suffering Savior met him with scripture, saying it is written. So this is how we are to meet Satan in, in all his forms, in all his forms and windings. Okay. Okay. Yes, Isaiah fourteen shows us, shows us this clearly, and we all know this. We just read verse 13, 13 to fourteen. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt exalt my what throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the what congregation in the sides of the north. So Christ has church and state, but Satan comes and he tries to. He comes and, and he goes and perverts this and builds up his own church and state system where now the church is ruling the state when it should be the state ruling the church. But this is only right when it's under Christ's, um, Christ's, Christ's power. It says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So this is, this, these two tests clearly show us that Satan counterfeits all that Christ does. And this is and I know some may have a stigma in their mind that when you hear going out to the cities, it's a evil work because of this next quote. Um, 1SM 204.2. The enemy of souls has sought, sought to bring, bring the supposition, supposition that a great reformation was to take place amongst the Adventists. And that this reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith and, and engaging in a process of reorganization. Where this... Reformation to, to take place, what would result? The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church will be discarded. Our religion will be changed. The fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the last 50 years will be accounted as error. A new organization would be established. Books of a new order would be written. A system of intellectual philosophy will be introduced. The founders of this city the excuse me system would go into the cities and do a wonderful work. The Sabbath, of course, would be lightly regarded, as, as also the God who created it. Nothing would be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement. The leaders would teach that virtue is better than vice, but God being removed, they will place their dependence on human power, which without God is worthless. And we saw in the last presentation that we cannot do this in our own strength. It is only by divine power. This is where the angels are helping, but there's no angels coming to help these th this this new organization the foundation will be built on the sand and storm and tempest will sweep away the structure so there is a right way to go out into the cities and and, and the lord the lord will show us directly when we are to go out go out to the cities 
just as Abraham had had a sign, this cloud, we would end up having, we would, the Lord would send, send us a sign and tell us that this is, this, this is the work in which we must do. We must take up our appointed work. So, recapping with Lot. So read this one paragraph and even going to look at Paul. He went, he did the same work. He went to the city to do a work. And this is the same thing which we will have to meet just as Paul met and just as Lot met. We will meet the dregs of society, this rabble. So. Says the angels then told Lot what was their errand and made known to him that God would bring destruction upon the wicked city. Lot believed the word of the angels, but his family was reluctant to receive their message. They had so long lived in the sight and sound of wickedness that their senses were blunted to the grievous character of sin. Lot had afflicted his soul for the debasing sins that the Sodomites were continually committing. And yet even he had not thought their sin was of the debasing character it was, nor deemed that it was so firmly seated as to yield to no remedy. He begs, begs permission of the angels to go forth and warn his daughters and sons-in-laws sons-in-laws who live in the city so lot he goes into the city and he but he's he's guided by the angels he made his way through the rabble who were prevented from injuring him by the power of the angels gave his message to his children so yet again this promise is for us for faithful with grief and terror he begs them to leave the doomed city and flee with him ere its destruction shall be accomplished but they look upon him as as upon one who is mad coming to them with such a message at the midnight hour. They laugh at his fears and think some, some horrible nightmare has crazed his brain. They will not trouble themselves about the matter, but treat it as a joke, and these who will not receive the message sleep on, heedless, heedless of that last warning of their lives. So, this rabble, as we said, is this lower class of, the peop of people. So the dregs is this... lower class this is just one portion of the dregs because the darkness that was upon christ is we read it was symbolic of the agony and something else that that weighed upon christ's heart so this is just one portion yet again this is only one part of all that christ has shown because there's many things the lord has shown but i'm just bringing one portion so now let's go to act 17. now now when they had passed through and for Paulus and Apollon Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where, where was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. So, what I want to put forth is that this message, it goes, it goes forward to the church. And, it, and Paul is here for these three Sabbath days reasoning out of the scriptures. I won't say from the prediction onward to the end until till they reject or accept it he's reasoning with them so we are to be as paul giving this message faithfully reasoning out of the scriptures um paragraph three that that christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that this jesus whom i preach unto you is christ so paul comes here and goes over all the old things showing why 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 christ came and why why um why he died so we when you're opening all these things and it's this from the ninth to the ninth hour this whole period you're showing why you're showing all these all these things but just as um but yeah we see in this 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 period here is just a fractal it, this here is just a fractal of here. So even down here, you have this one, two, then this three here, where now you go over it again, but now it's with more politics. It's, it's a bright light now. Okay. Um, verse four. And some of them believed and, and consorted with Paul and Silas. And of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of chief women, not a few. So, when you go out to the cities, you will have success and you will have trouble. Because Lot shows, shows the trouble, but now Paul here is showing the, 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 um, the success of the message. But also, when there's success, 
Satan is on the ground. He's always on the ground when there's success of God's people. So now we'll see the, see the, the troubles that will come upon Paul. But before we get there, let's read this quote. DA 621.2. Okay. At this time, Christ's work bore the appearance of cruel defeat. He had been a victor in the controversy with the priests and Pharisees, but it was evident that he would never be received by them as a Messiah. Final separation had come. To his disciples, the case seemed hopeless, but Christ was approaching the consummation of his work. The great event which, which concerned not only the Jewish nation, but the whole world was about to take place. When Christ heard the eager request, we would see Jesus. The the hungering cry of, 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 excuse me, hungering cry of the world, his countenance lighted up, and he said, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. In the request of the Greeks, he saw an earnest of the results of his great sacrifice. So in this period, as we see here, Paul is reasoning out of the scriptures, says Greeks came in. So now in the time of Christ, when he will soon soon meet meet the cross, Greeks came in, and and this was, and and the Greeks that will come in here in this time period, are are an earnest of the worldlings that would literally come in in the sun world crisis and and onward. So all all throughout time we're going to have these have these worldlings, but it's also but we also know, the quote says, it says, um, I saw the Advent people before the throne. And then it was a church in the what? World. The world. So now, so, so there's whirlings amongst the Adventists that will come in in this period, but they were in earnest of the Adventists that will come in at Midway and the Civil Sunday Law. So we have to keep, keep these things in mind. There's, this, ah. I believe there's a quote when she states where, where is that when people come, come in, in into the truth it is a reassurance for those who have spoken the word so this is your this is this help in this trouble you have this is what christ had because because the disciples thought thought that this was a defeat but the they they thought that the time the time they were in was a defeat but when the greeks came in it was showing this triumph so next paragraph these men came came from the west to find the Savior at the close of his life, as the wise men had come from the east at the beginning. At the time of Christ's birth, the Jewish people were so engrossed with their own ambitious plans that, that they knew not of his advent. The Magi from a heathen land came, 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 came to the manger with their gifts to worship the Savior. So these Greeks, representing the nations, tribes, and peoples of the world, came to see Jesus. So they'll come in to see this message because this message is Christ because he says he's, he's the word made flesh and this word will be in you and you'll be speaking this word. So you're seeing Christ within and without this beautiful thing. You had a thought? Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. In the east, in the east with the Jews. To come, come to the east. Amen. So, there will be success when you go out to the cities. So, because lives will be saved, just as um, Lot's Lot's family save, save his wife. Last sentence of the quote: So shall many come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. So, when you're going over all these old things, these old things will bring in bring in all the um. Or the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. Okay, page four. All right. Acts 17, verse 5. But the Jews which believe not. So, so there will be a group, when you're going out to the cities, there will be Jews who, who believe not. Moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. So this base of sort are the, is the rabble that Lot met. Of the, it's the lower class of people. The base of sort is this lower class. And we, have, we see there rabble means, means mob. 
and the basal sort, no, excuse me, the rabble means vulgar, and the basal sort are, means vulgar as well. So the vulgar people come, come forth and they trouble the, the work of the Lord. Continue on verse 5. It says, and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought, sought to bring them, bring them out, out to the people. So when Paul goes out to the city, you have these certain lewd fellows of the base of sort that, that rise, up, rise up here and oppose the message of God. And when they do this, they go set the whole city on an uproar. So, and just as we were saying, this rabble also is Black Lives Matter. Because we know the message in which in which we'll speak speak against it's against Black Lives Matter. It's it's against the gays. It's against it's against all these evils that is in the world. It's against against the the, the falseness in in God's church. It's against every every everybody. Because the, there's a quote she says that he speaks against everything but that which he teaches, and that is that is our lot. Our hand will be against every man, and every man's hand will be against us because we're speaking against all the injustice and the, 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 the sin and the foolishness that is in the world. And because of that, the whole city will be set on an uproar against us. But as a lot was safe in the rabble, we shall be safe in the rabble because of the heavenly sentinels, the angels. And we have to keep that in mind. Okay. <clears throat> so... We go to Isaiah 1, 18 to 20, because it says that Paul reasoned out of the scriptures these three successive Sabbaths. These, these three Sabbaths. Amen. Yes, he reasoned out of the scriptures onto, onto his family. Oh, yes. That, oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, that is true. <clears throat> and then the sword came upon them. Destruction. So now this is what Isaiah is saying, says, come now and let us what? Reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though, 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 excuse me, though they be red like crimson, they shall be, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat, eat the good of the land. You shall, shall enter this land here, the city of refuge, midway. But if ye refuse and rebel, just as the, the, the men in Sodom, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The fire and brimstone shall come if you refuse. So now, let's go into, go back looking at to Acts 17 with Paul. When he went out to the cities. As with holy boldness, Paul, Paul proclaimed the gospel in the synagogue at Thessalonica. A flood of light was thrown, thrown upon the true meaning of the rites and ceremonies connected with the tabernacle service. So he got a flood of light upon the old when he went, went to go, go for it and give them the old. What I'll say is that at this prediction then, there's a, this whole period, and the prediction just begins it, it's a flood of light. Moses and all the prophets, amen. All the former, it's pouring all, it's, um, it's pouring the, the four barrels of water. He carried the minds of his hearers beyond the earthly service in the ministry of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. T to the time when, having completed his mediatorial work, Christ would come again in power, great glory, and establish his kingdom on, on the earth. Paul was a believer in the second coming of Christ, so he was a Seventh Adventist. So clearly and forcibly did he present the truths concerning this event that upon the minds of many who, who, who heard, excuse me, that upon the minds of many who, who heard, there was made an impression which never wore away. Which is nice. Because even though some may not heed exactly in this time period, this whole period, that, that impression is still with them. So, and they'll respond at a, another time. So, so when we go on to the cities, the Christ, Christ will sow, sow these seeds in the heart of men, but these seeds will, will, will respond when God says so. It's the same illustration with the thief on the cross. Mm -hmm. His mother, from raising him up, sold those seeds in his heart until when he was placed upon the cross and he finally saw Christ and accepted Amen. the death of the cross that he was, he was to bear. Amen. Okay. Next paragraph, 229, paragraph 1 of Acts of the Apostles. 
It says, for three successive Sabbaths, Paul, Paul, preached, Paul preached to the... Amen. With them f from the scriptures regarding the life, death, r resurrection, of his work, and future glory of Christ, the, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, Revelation 13, 8. He exalted Christ, the proper understanding of whose ministry is the key that unlocks the, the Old Testament scriptures, giving access to their rich treasures. So the Lord will give us a key right here, and it will unlock many, many of the scriptures. And, and this, key is, this key is now when, when, when heaven is open. Our minds will be open. This is a rule that at each of these points, the Lord gives you this key, and your mind is now open to receive this flood of light. Go ahead. Amen. <clears throat> and this is a he exalted Christ, the, pop, the proper understanding of whose ministry is the key. Christ is the key. That revelation Amen. Yes. that he gives you, of the revelation that you receive at, at, at the prediction is also the key. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, next paragraph. As, as, as the the truths of the gospel were were thus thus p p p proclaimed and amen with m mighty power the attention of of large c c c congregations was arrested so when it's when you go forward in the cities many people will, will hear this and many people will heed it's, and and this is this is for this purpose here at midway Christ comes second time all I shall see him. Right here. Some of them believed and, and consorted with Paul and Silas. And of the, the and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. As in the places formerly entered, the apostles met with determined opposition. The Jews which <clears throat> the Jews which which believed not were moved with envy. These these Jews were not then in, in favor with the Roman power because not long before they had raised an insurrection in Rome. Hmm. They were looked upon with suspicion and their liberty was, was in a measure restricted. They now saw, they, they now saw an a, 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 a opportunity to take advantage of of s circumstances to reestablish themselves in favor and at the same time to throw reproach upon the apostles and the converts to Christianity. Okay. So now, this next paragraph was, says, this they, s this they set, this they, s excuse me, this they set about doing by, by, by uniting with certain lewd fellows of the base of sort, by which means they, by which means they succeeded in setting all the city on an uproar. In the hope of finding the apostles, they assaulted the house of Jason, but they could not find neither Paul nor Silas. So this is what happened with Lot. Paul and Silas are these two angels. The men went, went, went to go search, search, search for. 42 and they went to whose house they went to lot's house so so now right here they go they go to search 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 for paul and silas these two and go to jason's house but they could not find neither paul nor silas and when they found them not the mob and their mad disappointment drew drew jason and certain and certain brethren onto the rulers of the city crying these that have 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 turned Excuse me. These that have turned, these that have turned the world upside down, are come hither also, whom whom Jason ha, whom Jason ha, hath received, and and these all do contrary t t t to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there's another king, one Jesus. As Paul and Silas were not were, were not found, the magistrates put the accused believers under bonds, under bonds bonds to keep the peace. Fearing further violence, the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night onto Berea. 
So there's one illustration here that I, that I see. One point here. Paul and Silas. Are those are the ministers, are those who preach, preach the truth. But because the state power couldn't find these two, they, they got the believers, Jason and, so, I just leave it, yeah, I and the believers are those who believe in the message that the that the two gave. No, I don't have to write that. So one thing I'm seeing from this is that not, not only those who come up here and speak will be um, charged and so forth, those, those who are sitting here under the sound of my voice will also be questioned and brought, brought, brought forth in front of the state power to answer because you, because you brought in these these two men, Paul and Silas, these two angels, therefore, you will get it as well. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Peter's showing those who fail, but now um, Jason is showing those, those who pass the test. So this is a warning to all of us here. Everybody's sitting now, even if you're teaching this or not, if you believe in it, you will suffer persecution. That is what comes with this message. You will suffer persecution. Amen. To get. Amen. Amen. To go and arraign those, though, those, those, excuse me, those whom you know. It says brother, brother shall hate sister, mother shall hate daughter, and so forth. So, we all in this room, we all must know why we believe in this message. Because the Bible has shown us that not only myself, Rashad, Kanar, and Swindon, who, who comes in here and stands and teach, everyone in here, that, that if you believe this message, you will be arraigned as well. Because cause you've heard, heard all the things in which the Lord has spoken. And the unction is if you, that all who... Um, all who, all who live godly shall suffer persecution. But here's the promise. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way, a way to escape that, that, ye, that ye may be able to bear it. So we have to keep these promises in mind that in this, in this trial, you, you will be able to bear it if you just rely upon Christ. So now, continuing on, Acts Apostle 230.2. Those who teach unpopular truths need not be discouraged if at times they meet with no, no more favorable re reception, even from, those, though, even, from those who, even from those who claim, cl who claim to be Christians, then did Paul and his fellow workers from the people among whom they labor. The messengers of the cross must arm themselves with watchfulness and prayer and move forward with faith and courage, working always in the name of Jesus. They must exalt Christ as man's mediator in the heavenly sanctuary, the one in whom all the sacrifices, sacrifices of the Old Testament dispensation centered and through whose atoning sacrifice the, the transgressors of God's law may find peace and pardon. Second. Okay, next paragraph. The unbelieving Jews of, amen, filled with je jealousy and hatred of the apostles and not, and, and not, excuse me, and not, and not content, excuse me, and not content with having, excuse me, and having driven them from, from their labors, from, from the laborers among the Thessalonians, followed them to to Berea and again stood up the excitable passions of the lower of the lower class to do them violence. The teachers of the truth were again driven from their field of labor. Persecution followed them from city to city. Matthew ten, verse twenty three. 
But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. This is this is the work. So if you're in Portland, Maine, and there's trouble there, flee flee into Philadelphia. If it's, if it's in Philadelphia, go to New York, Connecticut, Boston. So this is how the truth will spread because we will have to follow this this law here. They persecute you, flee into another city. Matthew 10, um, verse 14 to 15. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when ye depart of that, depart out of that city, out of that house or city, shake, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So, shut. So, um, So when they do not do not receive this the message and you flee, fire and brimstone falls upon them. And because they have not received your word. Because this is what Isaiah tells us that if they do not heed it, sword comes upon them and cuts them down. So we have to keep these promises in mind that when we go into the cities, we, we know the angels are there and that everybody in here will be tested and tried in this. In this, in this, um, in this last trial before we're set free at the end. So, that being said, shall we close with prayer? Kind Lord on high, Father, we give thanks for this day, for the light and the truth in which we have shown. We ask you may forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings, and help us to keep all these things in mind. Know that you are here, here to help in in each test, O oh Lord. But help us to reach out the arm of faith and to lay hold on you, O Lord, so that we might not fall. Please, Father, help us. Help us to forsake sin and self so that Christ might live, live in each heart here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.